So when you're pruning an apple tree, especially if it's in your backyard, one of the first requirements I think about is what branches are going to be in the way of your everyday living in your backyard. If it's a branch, it's going to be really in the way when you're trying to mow your lawn or walk around your yard. And those are some of the first branches to consider removing. You want to prune most all fruit trees in the spring. And in my climate, I live in northern Utah, and the best time to prune our apple trees is in March. Um, it's late March right now, it's almost April. You can see there's some buds on the trees, but it hasn't flowered yet. There's not been any flowers or any leaves on the tree yet. It's still dormant. Uh, so you want to do the pruning now in March before the buds come out all the way and before you get flowering on the tree. So like I said, the first thing in a backyard tree is remove branches that are going to be annoying to you because they might get damaged anyways. You're functioning in your yard and removing those branches will just make your life easier. The next thing to consider is diseased, damaged, or dead wood. Uh, those are things you want to remove every year as well. If there's a branch that's very diseased or has dead wood on it or is damaged and halfway broken, you want to remove those branches as well. The other thing you want to consider is you want to create a vase type shape. So you can see this tree kind of spreads out at the base and goes up and I'm going to remove a fairly significant branch right here. This one right there. I'm going to take that branch out because it's it's kind of become a central leader in the middle of the tree and I want to create a little more openness in the tree. And the branches that were on that were hard to harvest from anyway because they're sticking really high up in the air and those that branch was making it difficult to harvest the apples and also will create more light and air for the lower branches to get the nutrients and the sunlight they need. So another really good tip I heard was you never want to cut more than 30% off the tree every year. So every year you want to do a little bit of pruning. Now I can see our tree is getting about to the height of our roof and so it's pretty tall. And so in years past what I've done is just kind of given the haircut. So I've cut it just straight off the top to, to reduce the height. And I, I've learned that if you, if you cut off the entire top of the tree, what happens is there's hormones in the top branches of the tree that will stimulate it to grow even more if you do that every year. So rather than giving it just a, rather than just cutting across the top as a haircut every year, I'm just going to start thinning out these larger branches down below um, as the years go by. And you just do a little bit less than 30% of the tree every year. So this year, I've selected this branch, like I said, right here, this large, large branch right there, this main leader, I'm going to cut that off right about here. The tree is already as big as I want it to be. I, don't, I honestly don't want it much bigger. I love the apples it produces, so I do want it to produce apples, but I don't want it to stimulate, I don't want to stimulate it to grow even taller than it is already. It's going to be a little bit of pruning, and I already, I already took off this branch right here this year. I took this off a few weeks ago and painted it, as you can see here, but this branch was sticking way out into my yard and making it difficult to mow my lawn and walk past it, so as I said before, that was one of the first branches I decided to remove this year because of that reason. Um, and I've also done a little bit of other pruning just to remove other disease, damage, or decayed wood. Um, and then, as you can see, there's other branches here that were sticking out kind of at my face level so that it's easier to walk around and navigate around the tree and mow the lawn underneath it. So another important step when you're pruning is make sure you use clean tools. I have more than one fruit tree in my yard. I have a pear tree, a peach tree, and an apple tree in my yard. And what you want to do is make sure you don't spread diseases among trees when you're doing the pruning. Um, so I have this sharp pruning saw that every time I, I make a, a large cut with, I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and I wipe it down so that uh, there's no diseases transmitted to the, uh, to the next tree. So just like you wouldn't want someone to do surgery on you with dirty instruments, um, you shouldn't be doing surgery on your tree, which is basically what pruning is. It's kind of like a surgery. You want to make sure your, your, your pruning tools are clean and sterile from, from most uh, pathogens that could cause damage to your tree. So you don't want to cause diseases and spread diseases amongst different trees. So you keep it nice and clean with some rubbing alcohol before you make significant cuts. So another thing to consider when making pruning is there's a line right here that you don't want to cut into that line because that is where you need the healing to occur. And so it's better to cut up a little higher. I started making a cut here, you can see. I've already cut off some of the large branches off this. I've cut off some of the big branches that were sticking way up high so that when I pull this down, those larger branches don't come down on me or come down on the, 
the other parts of the tree. So I took my loppers and cut, cut, cut those bigger branches and pulled them out of the way. Same thing with this, cut that off because it was, it was sticking way out here and it would, it would fall on these other branches down below. And so, and then I'm going to make a saw cut here, avoiding this, this, avoiding this seam here and maybe coming up a little bit higher so that you don't create a large wound. You want to create, kind of think about the, the way that you want to minimize the wound on the tree and allow it to heal better. Um, because the, the places where you cut are areas where diseases can happen easier. So here are some of the branches I just took off in preparation for removing this larger branch in the middle. And you can see it's a pretty large tree, and so I'm not removing more than 30% of the tree this year. And next year I might do a little additional pruning up there. Uh, again, you just don't want to overdo it every year. Just less is more sometimes with pruning because you don't want to stimulate overgrowth on the top branches. So another thing to consider, rather than pruning a branch down, sometimes it's better to train the branch. So instead of instead of cutting the branch, sometimes you can, if you want it to, to grow down for some reason, which I don't hear, but if you did, you could, you know, put a string with some weight on it. You can put sticks. You can do things to train the branches where you want to grow. As, as long as they're still flexible a little bit, you can train the branches to be where you want them to be. And in some cases, that is better, uh, and you'll be able to produce more fruit. Um, if you train them because if you if you constantly prune down a lot of the branches What happens again is you're gonna get a lot of the overgrowth of the, of the branches shooting straight up in the sky because it creates the hormone that It will make them grow farther. There's less of the suppressing hormone when you cut off all those top branches. So if after cutting 30% or less of the tree you still need more Changes to your tree you can train some of the branches as well as another option. Okay, now when you're making larger larger pruning cuts on a large branch, you want to do a small undercut here so that when the big, big branch comes down, it doesn't tear the bark below where you want it to tear. And so if you take a, just make a minor pruning cut below, that will help prevent that bark from tearing and creating a bigger wound uh, than you want from when you take off a larger branch like this. This is especially true if the branch is angled more, like that branch down there is angled significantly. So if we were to take that one off, we definitely want to make a cut below so that the, the, it doesn't tear off the bark below when, it, when the branch falls down. Now you can see that lower cut I've made down here so that when this larger branch doesn't come off, the, uh, the bark down below won't tear. So you make a small cut there first and then you can make the main cut all the way through. space for these branches to get more air and sunlight and uh, kind of help control the height of the tree as well and there's not a central leader anymore it'll just kind of branch out a little bit more send the strength into these other branches that will go in other directions I'm gonna clean up this cut a little bit it's kind of ragged here 